Hey all, this is Miss Marcel and welcome to the classroom. So this is my video letting you guys know what we're doing in the classroom and some updates also on uh, Skyward. So let's start with Skyward. Um, I've been putting assignments into Skyward and adjusting um, the value of what a one, a two, and a three, and a four are, and I think I'm uh, feeling pretty good about it. So I'd like to share with you that information. So students, as they complete a project, they will get a um, critique sheet that looks like this. Um, and each standard is listed on here. So if we kind of go close, you'll see there's requirements, uh, mediums, principles of design. Um, then they also have here an art, artist statement. And this is an example of a seventh grade um, one. So depending upon what grade level they have, um, their standards are different. Um, they are then going to be assessed on this standard and below each of the standards is going to show um, what they're going to be assessed on. Sometimes they have to do a drawing and writing example. Sometimes it's a writing example. Sometimes it's their artwork that's going to be showing me their understanding of that standard. Um, if they're completing what is right down the center here, then they're at a level three. Um, if they are missing components or aren't quite there or needed a lot of teacher's assistance, they're going to be below standard. And so in this column is where I'm going to mark um, what they're missing and give them some feedback of where they can improve. If they are going above and beyond what is listed here in the center, then that's going to be above standard. And I will be marking then in here, indicating to them what they did that was exceptional. On the... Other column here we have where their score is, and I always have students self-assess first, and so they tell me what they think their score is for that standard. Um, and then when I get their artwork, I will then self-assess. Um, so then what happens is once I have this graded and I have all their standard scores, I then go ahead and place these into Skyward. So for this particular project, if we count here, we've got one, two, three, four, five standards. And so this project's going to go into Skyward five times. And so it might look a little strange that it will say no TAN project five times, but I have to enter it in as five separate standards. I can't put them all in at once. Um, so it will say no TAN and it will give this standard and then no TAN and the second standard and so on. Um, and then those uh, scores will go in. Um, I have weighted every single standard um, with the same weight. Um, so then percentage wise, they're all weighted exactly the same. So there's not one standard getting priority over another standard. Um, they're all equally important. And then um, from there, all those standard scores are um, averaged together with um, the how Skyward averages them up for me. And then um, they'll get a ending grade for the class. If students click on the grade in the class, they can then open up a spreadsheet that will tell them each standard and what their score was for that standard for that project. Um, so it's very helpful in Skyward if you don't just look at the final grade, but if you actually click on the grade and then look at each standard individually and you can see which standards maybe you need to improve on. Um, the weight of the standards are as so and I'm letting students know that if they're wanting to reach an A or an A plus, they're gonna need to be getting higher than a level three. So they're gonna need to be getting fours on some of them um, or a 3.5 and so on. Um, if they are at proficient, they're at standard, they're gonna be getting A minus in the class um, or an A minus on that standard. Um, and then if they're at a high two level, then they're gonna be at the B um, range. If they are um, getting a level two or a little bit higher than a level two, then they're at the C range. If they are at a level one, um, needing a lot of teacher's assistance, not really completing the work um, fully, they're in the D range. And then at the F is a 0.5. Um, so this is kind of replacing my zero. I'm giving them um, a tiny bit of credit for students who have not turned in their assignments, but they... Um, have done work in class. So they're working towards completing that project, but they yet to actually turn it in and there's no evidence for me to do that. So I'll be marking it as missing in Skyward and as a 0.5. Um, 
to indicate to you and to the student that they need to still turn that in for me to assess it. Um, students are welcome to reassess artwork at any time. They can um, redo a project, they can fix a project and resubmit all the way up until that last 11th week of the trimester and I can re-put in their scores. Um, I've already had some students come up and do some reassessing on their name tag project because they wanted to get a higher score on a certain standard because they weren't happy with um, the level that they were at. Um, so if a project has four or five standards, then those all um, get accumulated together um, for then their final art grade. Um, so please email me if you have questions about Skyward. I'll try and explain more. I know it gets confusing. The one thing that I really want to stress is that the percentage that um, says what a a and a B and a C and a D are um, is going to look very strange. So it might say that a C is like a 60 some percent. Um, and that's just how I can manage to get my four point scale in. So if we could avoid looking at the actual percentage and just look at the scores and the grades, um, that is what um, I would like for people to focus on. Um, so what are we doing in the art room? What's going on this week? So Advanced Art is finishing up their dream houses. They are turning out amazing. So they're picking a location of where they want their dream house to be. Um, and they're drawing to two point perspective. We have been studying Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, and they are also looking at um, different types of uh, houses and styles of architecture and trying to incorporate those into their artwork. They also need to incorporate um, a background and foreground. And we also are incorporating um, plants. And so they need to have at least three types of plants around their uh, property. Um, 3D art is coming along really well. We um, studied pop art. And they are making their sweet treats. So here's an example of a student sweet treat. They um, needed to make either an ice cream cone, popsicle, um, ice cream bar, their choice, or even an ice cream sundae was an, an example they could do. Um, and they needed to be at least 10 inches. So we wanted these to be a little bit bigger than normal. Um, and then they're decorating them with realistic textures. Here is an example of a ice cream bar. I love how it has a bite out of it and sprinkles. Um, and the, the little stick here. So um, students will be finishing these up next class and assessing their artwork and turning these in. Um, next we have sixth grade art. They finished up their If a Line Took a Walk project. So we talked about various lines last week. Um, they got these all done and started turning them in. If they haven't yet, they'll still need to. Um, and we are drawing various lines and um, then incorporating three shapes is a minimum and then also adding our color to it. And these are turning out really, really well. Um, and then today, whoops, forgot to grab. Um, we studied um, Frida Kahlo the last couple of days. We've been reading the Who Was Frida Kahlo book and we are starting to talk about our um, self-portraits. And so they're gonna be doing symbolic self-portraits, incorporating seven images about themselves and three hopes and dreams around the outsides of their heads to really show who they are um, as a person. And then with seventh grade, they are finished up with their no-tans. So we looked at symmetrical versus asymmetrical balance. Here's a student work. Um, they did these amazing no-tans learning how to cut the paper, creating symmetry and balance, also creating um, these positive and negative spaces. And then they also completed these larger pieces um, that look like this um, with more complex, um, more shapes and more complex shapes with more flips to them. So they did a really great job, job on those. A few students still need to complete those and turn them in. Um, and then this week we just started out talking about Zentangles. And so we're starting a new project that is our Keith Herring Watercolors Untangle. And so the first steps are for us to practice pattern making. And so students are creating these wonderful patterns um, on their worksheets and getting used to creating um, various patterns with um, high contrast. Um, and then 
we did yesterday and we'll do today our um, watercolor techniques. So they're learning eight different types of watercolor techniques. Um, and they're gonna be incorporating this component and this component into their final that we will be starting um, next class. Um, we'll be studying who Keith Haring was and his artwork and how all of these um, pieces will come together. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I will incorporate the board that will have the um, sixth grade self-portrait project and the Keith Haring um, watercolor for exploratory art um, at the end of this video. Um, thank you. Have a great day.